Hey Jackals, in today's video we'll take a look how you can animate the logo in the 2D space using DaVinci Resolve. Now let's get digital. Now this is the logo in question, you can animate it in different ways, but the method that I've chose is to split the logo into a bunch of shapes. In this case, images. This was done using Adobe Illustrator, but you can use anything that you want. So I have a bunch of images and I've made a fusion composition. So the animation looks like this. And what you need is some imagination. Now to start it off, you will need to open the media pool, right click inside the media pool, go to new fusion composition, give it a name if you want, change the duration if you want and make it. Then put it onto the timeline, select it and go into the fusion page. Now inside here you will also want to open the media pool and put all of the images that you will be using inside. What we'll want to do then is put the logo in, this one is the full one as you can see and you'll simply connect it to the media out. Now in this case the size is not the same as the timeline resolution so to fix that we'll simply add the background and add the merge node. You can select the merge node and flip it around between the inputs with Ctrl T. So now this is 1080p. And with the background you can simply lower the alpha and make this transparent. Now the next step can be tedious because what we need to do is to put all of the images inside this fusion composition and add a transfer node so that you'll actually position those elements over this image. So let me take this blue hammer just so I can show you how this is done and right click this will be the default toolbar that you have if you want to make your own. I also have a video on how to do that. Then you'll take the transfer node, connect it and basically what you'll have is a bunch of merges but now you'll actually take the transfer and position this where it has to be positioned. Now you can also go to the merge node and maybe change the blend so that you can see what you're actually doing and just position the elements as best as you can. Now you will do this for all of the elements and I suggest you split the node composition into different shapes. So this would be one shape, this would be maybe the second shape and this would be the third shape because in this case all of the letters are separate and I've done just that so I'll just show you this composition. So let's see. So this is the first shape you can rename the nodes by pressing F2. So this is the circle, the blue hammer and the black hammer. Now I've basically positioned them over the original image, just like I've shown you. Now before you make all of the connections, I suggest you make a transform and don't connect it to anything. In this transform, you'll go to the settings and pin it. And you'll be using the motion blur settings to simply enable all of the motion blurs that you'll be applying to all of these other transfer nodes. And that's because you'll be simply able to enable and disable all of the motion blur with one button instead of going to each separate transfer node to enable it. And then when you make the first transfer node, I'll simply make this one and let's say that this one is for this element, I will also pin it. And inside here you would go to the motion blur right click on it, select expression and you then connect this one down here and now when you enable the motion blur here this one will also be enabled. And now at this point you will also want to type in equals here and connect it to the quality of this one. So now you can simply adjust the quality and enable or disable the motion blur. And now with this done, you would simply copy this node a bunch of times and then make all of the adjustment separately. Now let's go to this composition and let me show you some tips and tricks that you can use to make the animations. So now that you have all of the elements positioned, you can simply Ctrl T this node and maybe also disable it so you only see the composition. How you want to do the animations, it's totally up to you. I'll just show you a few ways how you can do this. I'll also show you the circle, how this can be done because it's a little bit 
different from all of the other elements. And I'll simply copy this node so that we can see it. So the circle, let me just position it where I think it has to be positioned, maybe something like this. I've decided to animate the angle. And if I do just that, you can see that it doesn't actually spin in line. So maybe I'll go from zero to 720. So it spins twice and it spins fairly fast. And what you want to do in this case is actually position the pivot point. Ideally, you would simply export this as a circle or make a new one using an ellipse and match it to this shape. Let's maybe make just that. So we'll use this and the background node and connect it here. Make the ellipse have some border and then we'll simply scale it. So equals here, so we have the same width and height. Now ideally you would simply make an ellipse, copy it, and let's see, is this it? We can also adjust the level so that we can see where the ellipse is. So maybe this is the top, maybe something like this. Let's see how close I am. So now in the transfer node, I would simply want to adjust the pivot point to here. So maybe something like this, let me zoom out. I can leave this ellipse enabled. And now let's take a look at the animation. And I think I did a decent job. Then what do we have? Let me just connect this one to here. So as you can see, I would need to position the ellipse so I can do that quickly. The pivot will stay the same. So the animation will stay the same. Maybe something like this. Now I'll disable this blend mode. So this is how the animation would look like, but at the moment my PC is lagging a little bit and doesn't want to render this out. And as you can see during the animation, if you don't have the blur selected, it look like this. Otherwise you'd go to settings and enable it and apply the quality. But I suggest you don't enable the motion blur until you have everything done. So this is how you can animate an ellipse that is off center. Then for the hammer, what I've done is I've animated the size. And how you can animate it is simply go to one position. And when you make the animation, I also suggest you don't go to the start at frame zero, especially if you want to make this animation reversible. So let's say I go to frame 10. I animate the size. I want the size to be zero. I'll make it a little bit bigger so that I can position this. So this is the final position. So I want to keyframe the center position and go to the ending of the animation, maybe frame 20 and keyframe the last position and change the size to one. Then at frame 10, I'll simply position this and I can now change the size to zero. So it's not visible. So maybe something like this. Now the hammer animation would actually start at this point. So I would have to maybe go to keyframes, enable the three dots, show only the selected tools. So it only shows the transfer node that I have selected, grab the keyframes and position them here. So now I fix the animation. So it starts at this point. And I can now also animate the angle. So I'll keyframe that and type in 720. So this also makes two whole circles. Maybe something like that. Now what I can also do is go to the spline. And in this case, I'll select the angle. Click to zoom to fit. Select both points. S to make this smooth. And I can now adjust how the animation should behave. And again, to make the animation look nicer, you would go to the settings and enable the motion blur at the end. I've done a similar thing here. What I've done is I've animated the size and I've changed the pivot point to here so that it scales from this point. Now, if I left the pivot point in the center, so let me just show you how that would look like. It won't look the same as you can see. So the hammer actually animates from this point. So let's just put that back. Then we have the text and basically I've done the same thing, adjusted the center, adjusted the pivot 
and depending on how I want it, I animated the size, maybe the aspect and the angle, and the aspect was done with the dot. So let's see how that looks like. You can see that the dot gets squished down. Actually you can see it, so let me just disable the motion blur. So for some reason I had to disable the motion blur on this node to make the dot visible, which doesn't make any sense to me, but I guess that's how it is. So now if you go look here, the aspect, if you put it lower to 1, the dot to an image will get squashed down, and if it's more than 1, the image will get taller. So that's what I did, and simply made a path, nothing too fancy, I could use an actual path, but the animation is so fast that this is not even visible. Then you could also apply the aspect here if you wanted to make this bouncy. Then if you have separate images or letters in this case, you can apply all of the options to individual shapes or images. And in this case, the letter T has a bunch of animations. Now the letter T gets shot out, then it flips to one side and then it flips to the other side. And then finally to the center position. Now how you can achieve that is again with the pivot point, so you have to keyframe it. No idea what this shows, but it should show the pivot point of the letter T, but I guess it doesn't for some strange reason. So anyway, when I tipped it to the right side, the pivot point was here. When it comes back, which is at, let's see, this point, the pivot point is here and in the next frame the pivot point moves to this point so that it can tip from this point to the left side. Now in this case I also have a bitmap and a background node. So the bitmap just uses the alpha channel so it's a little bit off but what the bitmap does is it takes the mask and this should be actually white where the letter T is and then with the background node you simply change the color of the letter. Now I've simply animated it by keyframing each position where I wanted the color to change and that's how you can achieve this effect. And lastly I have the whole letters, so this is using the pivot point, the aspect and the center position. Then we have this one, this one was strange and I have no idea why. So basically I have masked it so the rectangle was the mask. I basically moved it away. Now it doesn't matter how much I move the last point to show the letter A. When I got into the edit page, this A actually wouldn't show up. So I had to paste this again and make a mask for only the letter A. And lastly, I've just combined these two and make a simple ellipse which looks a little bit strange and don't ask me why. And I simply went outwards to show these two lines. And as you can see, this again doesn't work as it should. I'll go back to this position and just put it how it was, like this. And now it works. Now in this case, I use the polygon to mask out this word. And what you may want to do is not use invert and you may want to use the level to mask this out, but if you do this, then the text position will be way off, which is not what you want. So simply leave the level to 1 and select invert and you'll have the position where you want it to be. And the ellipse is kind of similar to the polygon. Let's just go to this part. You can't use the level to animate it. because that just hides what is shown. So level has to be at 1. And the height, as you can see, it's very small so that nothing is visible. But if I put this to 0 at this point, as you can see, this does not work. So this should not be visible. So you may need to use a tiny value, just like this, so this is actually not visible before the actual animation. Now the last thing that you may want to do is to reverse the animation. If you have a ton of nodes where you've done the animation, you basically only have one way to do this 
and that is to use the time speed node time speed now in the time speed node we will set the speed to minus one this will make the animation go in reverse I'll display it on the left side so as you can see it starts to go in the reverse now you can just connect the time speed node to the media out because then you won't have the animation at the start so what you need is a dissolve node and put it in between and this dissolve node will switch between the start of the animation and the ending of the animation now in the dissolve node as you can see this will switch the background and the foreground so if this is the start of the animation in this case because it's connected like this this will be zero and then once it gets to this point this will be one now this will switch between the halfway point so in this case i think this animation is a little bit too big to make this work like it should so this animation at this composition length should ideally finish before frame 118 but in this case it doesn't it's still rendering at this point so i'd have to extend the fusion composition to make this work but how you'll animate this automatically and instantly is to type in equals now what you need to do is put here an expression that will instantly switch between the background and the foreground i'll simply go to my website and i have here dynamic transitions copy this part paste it in and see if it does what i want it to do so it does not so if this doesn't do what you want it to do you can simply select the dissolve node ctrl t and this now switch basically from the start of the animation so this should now be ending the animation but as i said it shouldn't look as great because the clip actually isn't long enough and if you want to export the composition with transparency like this one is so that you can put it into other video clips you can watch this video and if you found this video helpful give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you want to see more davinci resolve and video editing content and hit the bell notification icon so you know when my next video comes out i'm simon and until next time jackals keep it digital